Think different, live different. V180. V180. Something different. It's Joseph O'Brien with something different. His latest track here on V180. Now, uh, myself and Leah got to chat with him when he was on his uh, Jeremy Camber tour just last year. And, um, well, he was playing keyboards. So, I'm not sure if you're aware of that one. But it was great to be able to catch up with him. And uh, we finally be able to put this interview together, which is great. So, it's a little bit old, but at the same time, um, you know, there's context for uh, some of the things we're going to be talking about. But we're able to... Uh, you know, introduce him to some Aussie foods and find out a little bit more about our mate, Joseph O'Brien. Hey, we'd like to uh, welcome you to our interview with Joseph O'Brien. Hi. Uh, welcome. They said good day, good evening. And good night. No, good night. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you can say good day. Good day, good day. is, is, is yeah. a great way of saying good day. So, welcome. Good day. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you. To thank you for having studio. me on the show. Appreciate um, it. Joseph comes all the way from... Nashville, Tennessee, mm-hmm. and uh, you're on a little bit of a tour at the moment. Yes. I've been uh, wrapping up today, actually. Yes, in Australia, yeah. Yes, yeah, that, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but that, that's been a big thing for you in the last little while. Yeah, it has. Uh, I mean, I grew up listening to Jeremy Camp's music, so getting able to play, play keys for him has been really cool and uh, definitely a dream come true. And coming to Australia, out of all places. Oh, like, heck yes. Yeah. This nice. is the best place to be, right? I know. It's it's really cool. You'll have a, a great setup here. It's very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Well, look, I think what we need to do, before we talk about your tour and Jeremy and, and, and a whole bunch of things, let's just focus on Australia for a second. Because yes. Because this is your first time in the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's probably a few things that you haven't done before. Yes. Lot um, of, yes. Lots of things. So yeah. we would like to introduce you to a couple of Aussie things, like food. Okay. All right. Cool, cool. So... Um, I think what would we like to go with first? Well, I think we should bring in the uh, Vegemite sandwich. Yes. Oh, I've a, heard lots about Vegemite. You're going to love a, this, right? It's, yeah, it's a uh, Australian staple. Well, basically. can you explain to me what it is before I eat it? Like, um, what what's in it? No. No, I just got to go? <laughs> so, what? Okay. Okay, so basically Vegemite is, what is it, like vegetable... Extract. Uh, yeah, it's a vegetable yeast extract. It's yeah. quite nice. And it's, it's like okay. black tar. It's very salty. But black it's tar. So yeah, yeah. It's, I've heard it's it's black and it's sticky. Yeah. 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 And but it's it great. works. And it works. It works. Okay. okay. So yeah, yeah, that looks great. Yep. I'm actually really nervous about this. No, don't. Nothing <laughs> because can be noticeable. I know, but like I've heard so many things about, things about Vegemite, and I just <laughs> I don't know what I don't think I'm gonna like it. But no. I I mean no disrespect to your country if well, I dislike it. Here's but, the thing: it can only go bad once. Exactly. Okay. So I would suggest. Just enjoy. So, how big of a bite do I need to be taking just, here? Just a bite, just like just a little a bite, fry. right yeah. from the center. From the center. Yeah, from the center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. You the don't crust. want any enjoy. crust in that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I really hope this is <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm a little nervous. All right, here we go. Okay. Mhm. It's processing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh no! There it goes. Oh. No. No. Okay. <laughs> What? Oh, it's like got this after kick. Yeah, it's that's nice, the best isn't part. It? <laughs> no, it's really savory. Yeah. Okay, hold up. It's my. Ooh. It's dying down. It's dying down. Okay, you, you need to let the butter do the work. <laughs> oh uh, no, that's a mm-mm, no. So that's a thumbs down. That's a okay. thumbs down. Okay. I can't. Right. No. no, that's fine. No, we'll, we'll, no we'll, I appreciate. We'll I appreciate then. trying Thank it you. though. All right, we've got we've got one oh. more. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, this. All right. All right. right. To make this feel better. We've saved the best for last. Save the best for last. Okay. Uh, you can have a drink now. Yes. Okay. To get rid sure. of the flavor. Oh wow. Let's call in the Milo. That's strong. Milo. That is really <laughs> strong. <laughs> that is crazy. So what is this I'm holding now? Look, it's like think hot chocolate, but better. It's oh, a, better it's than a hot nice chocolate. Warm chocolate drink. Yeah. And what's in it? It's just chocolate. Uh, it's malt. It's chocolate. Okay. Chocolate. Yeah. Uh, All right. Sugar. It's Milo. Milk. Milo. Oh. That is a good sign. We're going for the second sip. No, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh, Get rid of the Milo taste. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gwen's just finished off the rest no, of the sandwich. No, that's a winner. So that's great. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I just... Ooh, what, what, <laughs> waste good, yeah. what waste a good sandwich. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, this is really good. It is like hot chocolate, but you said there's like malt in it? Yeah. 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 It's like malt malty, chocolatey deliciousness. I love malt. I'm like a yeah. big malt guy. Yeah. yeah. Great. Nice. Wow. No, 10 out of 10. This is 10 out of 10. Okay, so we've got a two thumbs up there. Yeah. 
Two oh, enthusiastic thumbs up on that one. Love yeah. it. Love it. I can't do the Vegemite. I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. Literally That's okay. so sorry. It's off everyone. It's okay. He's done yeah. the Tim Tam thing before. I've asked him about that before, and that's, that's okay. so we weren't going to do that. Just enjoy that one. Oh, thank you. So I appreciate right. it. Uh, it's Joseph O'Brien being a good sport there, uh, trying out the Vegemite, and uh, of course a cup of hot Milo, which he absolutely loved. Hey, um. We're going to be back, going to be hearing more of Joseph's story. But right now, let's continue with the music from After Grace and Heights. This is more than ever. Never been another time in my whole life. It's a live city with Quasar Pro. That is called Free. Loving that track. Now, uh, Joseph O'Brien uh, and Leah and myself hanging out recently and uh, asked the question about how he managed to uh, get himself on the Jeremy Camp tour and find himself in Australia. Uh, let's continue with that conversation. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, because my friend reached out and just like having to do something like this. I mean, it's very, I feel like it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to like come this far away. I mean, it's a 15 hour flight to get here. Heck I've never been on a plane more than five hours. So uh, that was an adventure. And then uh, just kind of, ex- we, we did Perth first and then we moved from Perth to mm-hmm. uh, S- Sydney, no, Melbourne. And then to Sydney, and now here. I know the way I say Melbourne is not the right way to say <laughs> okay. Melbourne. That's right. That's okay. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it's it's actually a really good point in my life because about a couple weeks ago, I went on this huge trip uh, out in the U.S., like out to the West, just exploring, you know, uh, stuff that I had never seen before. And now this trip coming coming at the same time, mm. it's just been cool. I've been doing a lot of like explore, exploration and and stuff. And uh, it is weird though, feeling um, I've never felt like the minority ever. And now coming here, it's like, oh wow, like I'm the I'm the outsider now, and that feels really weird. I get yeah. that. I totally get that because I've I've done American travel. Yeah. And you just go, it feels like we're in a movie. What the heck? Because uh-huh. everybody's speaking American. Yeah. And then they make fun of me <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know why I'm the one that talks funny. funny. No, you talk awesome. <laughs> we're the ones with boring accents. We need to get on it. You know, oh, accents are a funny thing, thing aren't they? But uh, yeah. Totally get where he is coming from. If you've traveled, you understand where we're all coming from. We all speak English. We all speak it in a bit of a funny way, hey? Hey, right now, let's continue with the music from Cortez and Kaz. This is called Daily. Yeah, I need you on the daily, daily. You want? On V1, Kobe James with whatever. Steve's my name, and if you've been wondering where Mel is and thinking, hey... Why isn't she on tonight? Yeah, well, she's just taking a break this week, um, so you've got me. But uh, the good news is we've got uh, Leah as well, and our guest is Joseph O'Brien. We caught up with him recently and, um, well, get to talk about uh, a whole bunch of things. So tonight, though, um, just had Kobe James' song, Whatever, but not sure if you're aware, Joe O'Brien and Kobe James make up the Kojo Show and Leah and I wanted to know more about this Kojo show. So let's continue listening. You, you're doing this thing, but there's a, there's been a few other things. So, I mean, like we could go with your life story and, mm-hmm. and things, and it's great to be able to find out more about you. But I, yeah. you've done a lot of work with your mate, Kobe James. Yes. And we love him. Mm-hmm. We play his stuff. We do. Yeah. Um, and together you guys are like this. Like yeah, the Kojo show. BFFs forever. Aww. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, best friends forever, forever. Yeah, <laughs> tell us about that. Um, well, we just met. I actually slid up on his DM, so I. I <laughs> this sounds so weird. I made the first move on Kobe James. Shameless. And uh, yeah, I had heard one of his songs, brand new, and I saw on Spotify. I was like, "Who is this guy? He looks like a Disney star." I was like, "This, I've never seen this guy before." So I just reached out to him. I was like, "Hey, love your song, love your music. I'd love to just meet up." He's like, "Sure, man." Um, so we got tacos at nice. a, a local little spot. And uh, he was much taller than I thought he was. Like from his album cover, I thought he'd be like five seven, and wow. he's like six three. What? He's, wow. yeah, he's, no way. Oh yeah, he's tall. Because he's, he's tall a guy. bit of a heartthrob, isn't he? Really? Oh yeah. The girls are like, oh, oh, yeah. yeah, I know. That's, he that's... actually he told me he lost I think like five or six thousand followers when he got engaged. Yeah. <laughs> wow. A lot, yeah. <laughs> Off the market. A lot of girls were heartbroken. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I was even a little heartbroken, you know. Just, yeah. <laughs> the, the bromance. Yeah, the bromance. Oh, yeah. Going to an end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we've been pretty much best friends even from the first day we met. They were just like, I, he was so kind, he was so energetic. We're both kind of hype guys. We get really excited about the smallest things. Uh-huh. Yep. And uh, yeah, we were pretty much inseparable. And so now we're just still making stuff and hanging out. So mm. yeah. Aww. What's the latest stuff you've done? Yeah. Latest things as far as Kojo? Yeah, because I've noticed this, this 
bit of a lull recently. Yes. Yeah, what's going so on? So after we get off tour... You guys haven't broken up because of the no. engagement no. party. Or, <laughs> so we taking some time apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, we actually did go through a little bit of a season where we were just struggling. I think um, on the Stephen Curtis Chapman tour, we were around each other all the time, like oh. even more than we were used to. In close quarters... And just dealing with a lot of frustrations musically that kind of fed into, our, honestly, our friendship. And we s- kind of stopped the Kojo stuff because we just felt like it was becoming more of a burden than something we enjoyed doing. Yep. And now that we've taken a bit of a break from it, we're kind of coming back to that place where we're just really excited about some of the things we're making now. Um, but yeah, we're, we're ha- so we are making stuff now. It's just not been released. And we've been thinking about a rebrand, you know, a little mm. bit. So I'm thinking there's going to be a, you know what? I had this epiphany when I was in Australia, and I got to do a song about Australia. Mm, yeah, <laughs> there could be. I think yeah, kangaroos, be. koalas. Make a song about Milo. Tropez, yeah, Milo. no, mm. we've been talking about it actually for a while. Um, about Milo specifically? Uh, yeah, about Milo uh, and Vegemite, and <laughs> as um, you do. Naturally. Yeah, as one does. <laughs> um, on a normal day basis. Mm. So uh, yeah, a catch. We'll, we'll be released. That's our next song release, actually. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll, we'll play it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> should be a banger. Yes. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to have to stay tuned for uh, this next banger that these guys are going to write together. Um, haven't found it yet, but um, still looking for that uh, perfect soundtrack, aren't we? Uh, but no, seriously, check them out, The Kojo Show. Uh, some good, fun stuff. Um, and we're going to find out more about their story very soon. But uh, the other part of The uh, Kojo Show... This is another Kobe James song, one that we sort of started off in his earlier career here on V180. This is Paradise. Hey, um, Kobe James and Joseph O'Brien um, join forces, good mates, to uh, form the Kojo Show. And uh, while we've been hearing uh, Joseph's story, let's continue now, uh, hear more about how uh, Kojo sort of all got together and you know, the most crazy story event that they have had together so far. Yes. So probably the most uh, crazy story was um, Kobe and I, when we first started Kojo, we released a song called Christian in the 80s, and then we made a second one, and we were trying to figure out what to write about. And I think actually the way it started was, I was like, hey, we should write a song like dedicated to all of our favorite Christian artists like growing up. So then I came up with this line like that said, I want to write a banger like, and then I inserted the artist's name, and we were like, oh, that's a good first line, but we need to figure out like a way. We even talked about Jeremy Camp and getting some other artists. And then Kobe was like, what if we just made the entire song about that first artist that I mentioned? Mm. And we just started cracking up. We thought it was the most funny thing. It would be the ultimate fangirl song. So then we, re- you know, we did a bunch of research on Wikipedia about his background and like got really creepy stalkerish, you know, about it. <laughs> deep dive. And oh yeah, big deep dive. <laughs> yeah. And then we finished the song, we released it. It kind of did something on Instagram for a second, but then the artist ended up seeing it and he created a response to our video with his own video. And then uh, after that, we were on a radio station in the States and uh, he came and surprised us like live on the radio station. (laughs) And we wrote a song with him. And then like, it was just this whole thing. He's like, what if I brought these guys on tour with me? That would be so funny. And so we ended up going on a 24 date tour run with this artist, and that artist was Stephen Curtis Chapman, yeah. which which Ooh. is crazy because we both grew up on <laughs> Stephen Curtis Chapman, and uh, yeah, never will we will never forget how cool that was, and uh, it still doesn't even feel real. It feels like a fever dream, you know. So crazy, right? Oh, crazy. I'd be just. Crazy what God does, you know? Yeah, just yeah, like yeah. something so small as like a video on the internet, and he just like took us on this little journey. So That's yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, Pretty cool. Um, yeah. When I first saw it, I was just like, this is amazing. Like, hey, first of all, I saw the first, the banger little clip. Yeah. And then I was just like, this is awesome. Wow, I love it. Um, and, and then to, to going and seeing you guys getting surprised and then mm. writing music with him. The question is, yeah. did, you, did you actually write any songs that have been released? Not any that that's have been the, released. That's the question we're missing, that section. Yeah, we did We did finish the song that we started in, at that radio station, but I, I, it's never been released yet, so. Yet. Still, yeah, still working on that with uh, Steven. Yeah, yeah. Because he's a pretty amazing guy, too. He is a really good guy. Yeah, honestly, everything you would want in an artist, like as far as how kind he is and how he treats his people. Um, kind of like my third dad, you know? Like, you know, very, not cl- quite second dad, but third dad on there. So, I don't know what that means, How but many dads yeah. Do you have? yeah. <laughs> no, I mean I have one dad, but I, I call up some people like my second dads, oh, you know, okay. like because I'm that close with them. He's not that yet, 
No. But like I, he could be second dad if he wanted to, like work up the chain. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't want to say it, but he could be granddad. Grand? Oh, maybe. He's, yeah. He's a little bit older. Yeah. But he's amazing. He's, no. We don't want to get that bad. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're ripping on Steven. Yeah. But. No, we love him. I really do. <laughs> Oh, I tell you what, we love him so much. We're going to play one of his songs very soon, to be honest. Um, but let's just push play on the song, though, that Joe O'Brien and Kobe James put together and played to Stephen Curtis Chapman. It's an amazing story, um, and I love this song. Have a listen to it. Yeah, there's this man I know, my CCM hero. I want to tell you all about him, about him. His eyes are navy blue, blonde hair, flannel, and boots. Yeah, I'm so grateful that I found him, found him. Fight. A giant, whatever music. Decree, yeah, I'll buy it. I swear I'll get his name tattooed on my face to prove what I have to do. And what is that? I wanna ride a banger like Stephen Curtis Chapman. Radio's been better off since 1987, and I wanna marry Beth to sing her all the songs I write. Whoa. How good is that? Uh, Joseph O'Brien, Kobe James, ride a banger. Uh, that's the song. That Stephen Curtis Chapman replied to. Kid you not. Um, go and check it out on their socials as well. Have a good laugh and just have your mind blown. Uh, it was great following along their journey as this all unfolded. But right now, though, I think it's time to do a bit of a throwback to a song from Stephen Curtis Chapman. One of his, um, probably one of his more popular songs uh, of the time in the last uh, several years, I'm going to say. Can't believe we're doing this, but we're doing it because we can. Uh, and it's a great song. Right now, though, this is Stephen Curtis Chapman on V180 with his great song called Dive. The long rains have fallen hard upon the thirsty ground. Hey, uh, right now, though, let's continue with our chat from Joseph O'Brien. Uh, sort of asked him a bit about uh, new music and uh, sort of led to a few other things, but. Uh, here he is right now. Let's get back to our interview. Yeah, new stuff. Um, probably the new year, January. Got some some new songs. I'm mean, uh, just like Kobe. We've he left like well, never mind. That's a long story. Uh, we both have been thinking about doing rebrands and what like kind of music we want to make. I still want to make Christian music, but I want to make music that's also stuff that I just like naturally would make too. And I love make like writing pop music as well. Mm. Um, and he's kind of the same way. And so we want our faith to to. Um, to be seen like in our music but sometimes not like so obvious you know like almost like switch foot yep. um or need, need to breathe charge of clay you know yep. just writing songs from the overflow of the heart um so that's coming in the new year and uh yeah nothing i'm pretty i'm a pretty boring guy i'm gonna be honest i don't have much going on this is the most exciting thing that's happened to me in a long time just even being here in the studio and um on tour with jeremy so Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, okay, so a lot of your songs are, you know, inspired by what you're going through at the moment mm-hmm. or what, what God's leading you through. Yeah. What, like, I, I imagine they're probably biblically inspired as well. What yes. are you reading at the moment? So, reading at the moment. So, that actually, the last, um, I'm reading the Bible, obviously, so I can talk about where I'm reading there. But nice. I also am reading a, a book on fasting right now, ah. which is really intriguing because I, I, we didn't talk about fasting in my family growing up and what that looks like. Um, but uh, in scripture, the last thing I was reading was John. Nice. So I love the Gospels, Solid. like you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Mm. Tales all the time, but still super good. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, just reading about Jesus' life is always th- the most impactful, just yeah. like seeing his ministry. And, um, you know, it's funny, I'm 25 now, so I'm not quite the age that Jesus was when he started his ministry, but I'm getting there, you know? Uh, and so <laughs> it's just cool to see that, like, he was, uh, I mean, we, his life pretty much was undocumented from, like, you know, when he was a child to, like, 30 years old. Mm-hmm. So there's, like, this part of me that's almost like uh, there's a little bit of mystery, especially with how, like, my music is going right now. And um, I'm not, like, a household name by any means. So, so <laughs> like, when you get to 30, you'll be like, boom, I've done my training. Now yeah, I can yeah. start so being serious. Yeah, yeah, so now I can start. Yeah. <laughs> 33 is when I can start taking music seriously, yeah. for sure. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there's a lot of mystery, and so just knowing that God has a plan and it doesn't all have to happen right now mm-hmm. is uh, is great. And um, so little things keep it opening up or opening up. So I'm just trusting Him with my future and uh, seeing where He leads. And yeah. 
Yeah. Well, they let me to Australia, so it's going okay right now. So, oh, yeah, so far, <laughs> so good. good. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, it's one thing you can always trust on is God. And uh, it's great to hear Joseph's story there of, you know, how God's brought him this far as well. And we'll see where he will lead him in the future. But right now, let's uh, have a listen to a great song from Joseph O'Brien. This song is called Camouflage. Uh, it is your Saturday night simulcast here on V180 right across the country. We're hearing an interview with Joseph O'Brien. Uh, Love and hearing his heart so far as well. So let's continue. All right. Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask the question that we ask every single American artist that we ask. Okay. Well, that we ask that we interview yep. on V180 anyway. And it okay. is the most serious question. So don't answer it straight away. You can think okay. about it. Yeah, take a breath. Have, have, a, have some Milo. Yeah, have oh, some yeah, Milo. Yeah. To Think grab. about this. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Okay, so if you were in a fight. Okay. Okay. And you had to fight either one horse sized duck or a hundred duck sized horses, which would you prefer? <laughs> uh, probably, probably the. Wait, sorry, let me. Okay, let me let, take a second. Let me pay, one let me duck? Pay the, I'll be mole on this. One giant oh. duck. One giant duck. Or a hundred duck-sized horses. Tiny, tiny horses. Think about... A hundred tiny duck-sized horses. Ducks, really? Absolutely. Why? That's the only right answer. No, it's not. You just kick them around. You pick the one. Kick them around. One. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know? You know, every, sing, golf club every just... single artist we've asked has said that, well, and they're all wrong. Do you why? play Mario or something? Um, like you get one boss monster at the end, and that's it. Yeah, well, I like well, cause one duck sized monster, one, 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 one horse sized, one so done. So one, okay, so a horse sized duck. I, was, I guess that is a decently it's a, it's sized a, okay, duck. Like it's Do a, I have any weapons to defend myself, or it's just you? Well, it's just me. It's just if you. it's just me, I can kick the I can kick the little ones. <laughs> yeah, I have like a, a built in weapon. Yeah, but think about the the like the donkey <laughs> the donkey kicks. I don't know. I don't know. Reckon? What am I gonna do with a big one? I'm just gonna hug it. And go up to it and just, Hi, you know. Well, duck is good. Yeah. yeah. Oh. How to partner You're not and a you'd vegetarian, are you? No, I'm not a vegetarian. No, sorry. No. No. Never right. had duck before. Ooh, Fair. it's good. Okay. That's good. Yeah, no, we This do. is probably getting okay. off okay. Actually, a little bit. All right, okay. <laughs> but, Either way. We'll no, let, my we'll answer was the right one. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know. I Ag- wouldn't want to. Agree to disagree. Uh, okay. okay, fair. That's right. fair. We'll, we'll have to mark that on our little tally board. I'm sure, I'm sure Lamentations has something to say about this somewhere. That'd be my guess. Yeah. That's Leah, and if you've heard any of their interviews from the girls upstairs of course uh, you may remember that uh, yeah a pretty common question as well um, you can go back and listen to the older podcast as well you hear that uh, come up quite a fair bit uh, but let's continue right now with the music here on V180 it's Lindy with Eris Ford this is right now Now, before we were talking about uh, uh, Joseph O'Brien, and uh, we've been catching up with him here and his story, and uh, one of the things Leah loves to do is ask all the big questions and find out more the background behind songs. Tell me about Take Your Time. Yes, Take Your Time. Take Your uh, Time, though. <laughs> yeah, oh, I see what he did there. Uh, <laughs> Well, it's it's funny because a lot of the, the ways my songs like actually come about are really like weird. I feel like it may be different than another Christian artist. I think a lot of Christian artists come into a write and they're like, "Hey, I want to write about this." Mm. Um, me, I come in with an idea, and a lot of times I'll mumble lyrics. So I came in with this idea with uh, the guys that I wrote with uh, the song with, which was uh, Paul Duncan and Jordan Sapp, and I had this little beat, and then. Literally, I was just like singing over the beat. I was like, take your time, take your time. But I had no idea what the other lyrics were. And Paul was like, yo, that's kind of dope. Like, we should chase that. (laughs) I was like, oh, okay, cool. So we just kind of like tried to figure out what that meaning could be. And once I get, once I have like a good vision of what the song could be, then it kind of becomes more personal. Mm. So uh, he, uh, you know, one thing about being an artist is that uh, a lot of time, things like when it comes to, you know, timing is is really hard because you're like, you want things to line up, you want to sign a record deal, you want to go on tour, you want to do all these things. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, for some artists, it seems like overnight success. You know, you got people like Katie Nicole mm. or... Um, yeah, but she had some you know, help from Josh from the afters going, hey, oh, check sure. out Katie, she's exactly. awesome, you know. And, yeah, <laughs> that's and for sure. you know, you have those people that their song just blows up and opportunities come, you know, pretty 
quite, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And then, but for most artists in CCM, I would say it's it's very much a long haul, or it's it's a it's a marathon. They'll they'll say. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just in a season of frustration, and some sometimes feel like I still am in a season of where it's like, God, what are you doing? What's what are you wanting me to do? And um, and so I think it was just a song of almost like surrender. Like God, yeah. even if you take your time, like I'm still going to trust you because you have a better plan for me, regardless of what, you know, the plan that I would make for myself. Um, and so, yeah, that song kind of just came out of that uh, frustration. And those tend to be most of the songs I write is like, I'm frustrated. So I write a song about that frustration. <laughs> that's fair. That's not, fair. not a lot no, of joy cool. songs, yeah. you know, or down, you know, <laughs> that stuff. That's pretty rare. But yeah. um, I just like to be, you know, raw and authentic, wow. you know. Such honest. an artist. I know. <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, write about my problems. Anyway, I think so, that's yeah. most of them. But are you, are, yeah. are you writing with, are, are you writing on your own most of the time? Or do you just ring up, you know, somebody Combined and go, hey, got yeah. this idea, let's get together and, yeah. you know. A little bit of both. My bedroom and record yeah. something or not, or mm -hmm. studio or wherever you're recording. Yeah. Um, and... And, and work on a, mm. an idea typically, or yeah, or, mostly Kobe. Yeah. I'll be like, <laughs> yeah. hey, I call, yeah, I'll yeah. call Kobe. I'll be like, hey, I got this idea because the thing is, we're so close. He's he's like my best friend, so like we don't have to candy coat anything, mm. so, especially when you're doing a new write with an artist. A lot of times, you're like, if they have an idea you don't like, you're like maybe like we could do that idea let's try it for a little bit but then we could try something but with kobe he'll be like yeah that idea is trash or like that's the worst thing i've ever heard but we still love each other so yeah. i i pass by everything through him and same for him for me I, I would hope um and so most of the time i start an idea send it over to him and um yeah recently that's kind of been our our, our, our deal cool. so has he so. got any new stuff that you can show it yeah. Uh, I couldn't show his new stuff. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. But it's cool. A lot, yeah. Of, and yeah, we're again at this point we're almost like best friends and business partners because we're just doing everything together. So oh, that's great. Shout out! I miss you, Kobe. I love you. <laughs> <Bye -bye>. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. <laughs> we'll take good care of him. It's yeah. Because right, yeah. um, we've we've chatted with Kobe a few times as mm -hmm. well. Uh, great guy. But um, so I was thinking like. Uh, you're not sending tracks and doing things individually as well when you're getting them produced because you're signed now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess there's a lot of responsibility to, mm -hmm. to do well. Yeah. No, uh, there's definitely an added pressure. When you're under a label, you feel like the stuff you release, like it's got to be high quality because mm -hmm. you're, you know, uh, competing with even other record labels as well. Not, I mean, we're all in, the, in it for the same They're reasons. They're all banging down the door going, yeah. hey, hey, I yeah, want you to me. Exactly. Yeah. It's like we're all trying to make Christian music and we're all trying to spread the name of Jesus, but also we want to be uh, like aware. We just want to put out high quality content yeah. and stuff that we're really proud of. And uh, so that's why y'all don't see me releasing like stuff all the time because I'm like, pre I'm just very perfectionistic. So it takes me, you know, I haven't released a song since April. And, uh, you know. That's okay. You're taking your time, though. So yeah. Uh, time. I've never heard that one before. Oh. <laughs> first time. First time. <laughs> it's really good. Really no, good. Hey, Steve's my name. We're continuing to uh, chat with Joseph O'Brien. Uh, believe it or not, he actually likes just to be called Joe. So uh, there you go. A bit of a, uh, a, a fun fact for you. Um, so Joe and uh, myself and Leah all had a good chat recently. Um, but we wanted to know more about some of his songs and, you know, continue to find out more who uh, who this Joe is. I was gonna ask about so we've got some other questions, right, yeah, about some do. of your other music. That's because I like getting the stories behind the songs, yeah. and I've given up on continuity. Mm. Um, Give Up on Love has got to be one of my all-time favourite ones. I oh. do belt it out very badly in my car. Oh, okay, cool. It's a good one. When I'm feeling a little bit sad, I'm yeah. like, oh, give up on love. <laughs> And so, since you're here, yeah. tell me about it. Uh, yeah. Uh, short story of that one is, uh, I, in Christian music, there's so many marriage songs. Yeah. You know, like, a lot of songs about, like, God gave me you for the ups and downs. When God made you, he must have been thinking about me. Yeah. All that stuff. And I was just like, okay, I'm so sick and tired. Okay, no, they're great. Like, Love I'm it. sure when I get married, that'd be awesome. Um, but where, like, where are the Christian breakup songs, you Yeah. Know? Mm. There's not a lot of, like, breakup songs on the market. There are. Where are the so, songs for the singles? I know, for the singles. So yep. I I assumed like okay a lot of people have been through failed relationships is is a thing um, and I had just gotten out of a relationship and so I was like wanting to write a song where you don't hate on the other side because yeah. there's a lot of songs in pop music where it's like oh you're terrible you treat me terrible yeah. or it's a very it can be very selfishly yeah. motivated so I wanted to write a song that was respectful of the other side but also like 
revealed just how hard it is to break up and yeah. and and being like I don't you know like me one day I want to be a dad and like I want to be a husband and so chasing you know chasing after those things like I still want to do mm-hmm. but also want to pursue God with my whole heart and be content being single because everyone does that they're like you just need to be content in your singleness Joseph it's a gift and you know yeah it's a gift yeah, it's yeah. easy for you to say you're married I know I know <laughs> yeah that's right so basically throwing all those frustrations into a song and kind of putting that Christian spin on it um and in the bridge is really where it says like God's got a plan I'll yeah. trust you through it um and I know yeah you've got me kind of deal and so that's kind of how the song uh, me and my best friend uh from college so not Kobe at the time <laughs> Zach oh yeah yeah Zach uh and Zach. I wrote it and uh yeah that became the first single under goatee yeah you know, mm. that was the first one we ever did so yeah well wow. yeah that and I freaked one. out because one time I got a text uh this was right before the song released and it was just this text and I was like hey man love this song this is really cool i feel like it's where christian music needs to go blah 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 blah, blah. and then it was like a dash t at the end and i was like who's mm-hmm. that and then all of a sudden it hit me Hang i was on. like guys i just got a text from toby mac he likes my song i don't need to make any more music this is it <laughs> you, you, yeah peak. relax so, retire yeah so T. anyway yeah T-Bone. toby mac yeah toby mac texted oh, wow. me that was that was one of the coolest moments we I, we actually started like dancing in a circle it was yeah. me and my friends and we were just screaming we thought it was so cool so, so the t mac yeah steven yeah who else michael huh michael is michael, michael w. w smith, w. smith yeah michael? yeah he, are you saying have I met them? Or yeah. You just have, have you been? Yeah. yeah. Well, Michael Levy Smith and I are under the Prince same forever? management. Wait. What? You yeah. Know, yeah. Wait. <laughs> but you're like, on, you're like on first name basis with these people. Yes. You don't say yeah. Their I, whole I name. could say. Yeah. I could like say Michael. Michael Levy Smith. Amy. Yeah. Steven. Wow. I've never met Amy. Not yet. Not yet. Wow. Maybe one day. Baby, baby. Baby, baby. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know. Matthew West. Yeah, I've met, met yeah, him. Yeah, yeah I'd say Matthew. He, is he just Matt now? Uh, no, Matthew. I call Matthew. Just Matthew. Matthew. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I. I don't know if he goes by Matt. He might go by Matthew. Yeah. I, who knows? But Maddie. Yeah, yeah Maddie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Joe O'Brien telling us stories about hanging out with uh, the people he's met. Uh, yeah, we're all just name dropping for fun, right? No, but seriously, it's great to hear his heart uh, and uh, how, how the process works with songwriting and, and so on as well. No doubt, though, when you're in that field, you're often uh, getting to connect with other people all the time. So uh, it's good to hear his story as he continues. But right now, though, let's, let's continue with that song that he was talking about. This is Give Up On Love. You are patient, you love. It's Joe O'Brien with Stages here on V180. We've been enjoying hearing his story and catching up. Myself, Leah, uh, and Joe, and um, yep, uh, sort of getting to the uh, the final stage now. This is the last part of our, our chat with him, but um, I had to ask, you know, kind of a, a, an interesting, poignant question uh, about music writing and so on. Um, have a listen. Yeah. All right, I want to make a suggestion because you, you touched on something that I, I thought, actually, you know what? This is something we need more of. Mm-hmm. So, like, that song, like, uh, let's let's go step back in time okay. um, to, to a lot of the DC Talk songs, right, where they're, they're singing about some of their older stuff, mm-hmm. uh, songs that are current for the generations of the kids. It's not just a... Let's all make praise and worship music now. Yeah. Let's make hard-hitting issue songs mm-hmm. like the I Don't Want It song, um, the Socially Acceptable song, You've Just Done Your Breakup song. Uh, but like all these things that everyone can relate to yeah. rather than a, hey, Jesus is my homeboy, let's write a song about that, mm-hmm. if you know what I mean. Sure. So, because somebody asked me a long time ago, what sort of song should we be writing? And I think, you know, we need a bit more relatable sort of songs that can encourage and you know give kids a bit of a oomph to yeah to walk properly mm-hmm. in yeah. their faith uh, so I, I don't know if you in all your songs that aren't released yet yeah you know, are there any of those there yet yeah, no, definitely. I think um, I've always wanted to reach like the new generation for Jesus. I think radio tends to be um, some like or, hold up, how do I say this right? I feel like uh, a lot of our generation has been struggling to try to figure out like the Christian music that they can relate to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, that's why I appreciate the V180 stuff. Is that, that what it is? V180? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. They are doing because I feel like that reaches the younger people because they're always hungry for new music, mm-hmm. music that feels like the music they're listening to. 
Um, and Christian like radio should be that place for like I think the people who feel like they don't have anyone or anything to you know like go to they put on Christian radio to make them feel close to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the new stuff that I've had, I've always wanted to be like the boy next door. Like I just want to be like super approachable and super nice. And like uh, even on my Instagram and TikTok, it's like I'm silly, I'm goofy. I try not to take myself too seriously because I mean uh, life's too short to take yourself too seriously. And <laughs> What we're doing at the end of the day, we're doing ministry, right? So, like, I just want, we're not pop stars, you know? There's, we need to have the humanity and everything. Um, And so, yeah, basically any, like, music that I make is just trying to to put songs packaged in a way that, like, uh, are scripturally rich, but also, um, again, just are just real and just authentic and Mm. um, kind of, like, yeah, I just want to, I don't know, just reach younger people and... uh, Yeah, the, the way to do that, I feel like, is just to write good music and not feel like you're catering. So, so many people think of Christian radio as a box, and they're like, okay, I've got to write this style. I've got to write mm. yep. this thing. And I just can't do that anymore. I did it for a second, and it was just miserable because I don't like fitting in a box. I like to just make music that is, yeah, just authentic to me and what I like to write mm. and to, to release. Um, and so that's, again, why I haven't released anything since April because I've just been coming to these realizations like recently. <laughs> um, because, yeah, so many people get wrapped up in how do we co- be- make this commercially you know, successful and how do we get, you know, the well, Dove Awards, you but, know, yeah, yeah. which isn't, it, those mm. things, you know, are important to, to make a living. Yes. Um, but if I feel like I'm not being myself at the end of the day, like, what am I even doing? Yeah. What, am I, what am I doing? That's so, right. That's right. Yeah. Well, we love what you're doing anyway. Thank you. So you're appreciate it. it. <laughs> thank you. Joe, thank you so much for coming in. It's been great to chat. Find out more about the man himself rather than just the music. The uh, <laughs> boy, big boy. <laughs> no, um, no, boy. <laughs> the big boy. <laughs> we'll go with that, big boy. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay. Big boy Joseph. Um, Let's go. No, but it's it's great that you came in. We've, you know, loved having every, yeah, thank <laughs> every you. moment big with boy. you here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, big boy Joseph is very happy to yeah. be here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> very much appreciate it. Big boy Jojo. <laughs> yeah, big boy Jojo. <laughs> Mr. Joseph O'Brien in the thank house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank appreciate you. it. <laughs> Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.